The following is a hockey podcast out of Vancouver and Surrey, British Columbia. It'll only consist of a lot of puck talk and even more BS, or in actual words, banter and satire. Enjoy and as always, go Canucks, go. Jonathan LeCaire and Mackey is making his way to Vancouver from Sweden. And guess what? We love Sweden here on Locked On Canucks. He's actually going to Abbotsford, buddy. There's a huge difference. Dude, I, I, I wish the Abbotsford Canucks played in Surrey, okay? When is that going to happen? Real talk. Your Locked On Canucks, your daily podcast on the Vancouver Canucks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, 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 welcome to another episode of Locked On Canucks. My name is Trevor Beggs, co-host of Locked On Canucks and also a Canucks writer for Daily Hive, Vancouver. Before we dive into this episode, we got to thank you for tuning into Locked On Canucks because guess what? It's your Canucks every damn day, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. And hey, if you haven't done so already, make sure you go subscribe or follow us for free wherever you listen. Uh, before we dive into things, also got to shout out Game Time, okay? Go download that Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. And Kyle, you're right, okay? Look here, Mackey. Yeah, he's going to play in Abbotsford first, but how long until he plays games? For your Vancouver Canucks, Ooh. could it potentially even be within the next couple of months here? Let's dive into that off the top here Whoa. on this Monday edition of Locked On Canucks. Also going to touch on goats of the week, uh, the Elias Lindholm injury issue. He missed practice for the second straight day on Sunday, despite playing on Saturday. Uh, so we'll dive into that and more. And of course, we'll get to your comments here on Locked On Canucks uh, for those of you who are joining us here live on YouTube. But it doesn't matter where you're listening. We appreciate you tuning in. And speaking of people I appreciate, let me introduce my co-host, Kyle Bowen. What's going on, brother? I'm doing good, man. Doing our thing. Uh, just showing up and talking Canucks. And it seems as if every time we turn a page forward into a new day, there's a new story with this team. And we also are getting into this era of Canucks hockey or this timeline of this, this season's Canuck hockey program where players are playing through injuries. And I don't know if I'm, like, concerned. I'm just a little confused. A.K.A., why are players playing through injury right now? I mean, look at the standings. Look at the cushion. I'm a little confused. Anyways, Kyle Bound, Trevor Bags, doing our thing. Join the Discord. The link is in the bio below. And I found a new way to use Discord in my mind, okay? I went out for some coffee this morning, and I thought about it, bro. Dude, there's an easy way to just talk to people down there, you know, with the, with the voice channel. Let, let's do it today. Maybe during the intermissions or something, okay? For real. And let's bring some of that audio into this program right here on Locked on Canucks. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. It helps us out a lot. Jonathan LeCaramacki in Abbotsford. Boom, bam. Trevor Bags. Stop teasing the people. You know that this guy is not playing games for the Canucks, the real ones, this season. Likely not. But uh, I, I, honestly, I think if he does play games for the Canucks this season, it's probably not a good news scenario because uh, that means they're so banged up to the point that they are um, – recalling Jonathan LeCaramacki. The only other thing is that, you know, if he comes in and tears it up in Abbotsford, like, does he become an option in the playoffs if there's injuries? So I think it'd be a combination of a couple of things, but the odds on him actually playing games for the Canucks this season, I would put it at... 1%. I'm going to say, no, I'd say like 15%. What? I, I think I think there's an outside chance it happens. Dude. I mean, look at how good this guy was in the SHL this year, but I do think it would take a combination of injuries and him tearing it up uh, in Abbotsford now. Again, that should be the focus for sure. I, I'm getting people excited. I'm excited too. Again, look here, Mac. You know, I'm just going to bury him in Abbotsford. I'm sure they're going to give him a little tour of you know Vancouver, show him around Rogers Arena. You know, um, he'll be he'll be around the Canucks. Um, but let's just see what he can do in Abbotsford. And you know, this is an Abbotsford team right now that has playoff aspirations. Who you know played some good games over the weekend, and you know Atu Ratu is a guy who's heating up. And it would be interesting to me to see Atu Ratu maybe on a line with Lecar Mackey. I think he's emerges the leader down there, but. Uh, you know, I expect the Mackey to be a difference maker at Abbotsford. Now, Cal, maybe I'm am I too bullish on this guy? He he did that. You know, he, obviously he was pretty slow in the SHL, or sorry, even the, the tier below that last year due to injuries and mono and whatnot. But this year he was lights out. You know, he was uh, he had the six most goals in the SHL uh, this season, 19 goals in 46 games. A uh, pretty impressive stuff from the 19 year old World Juniors MVP. And now he's going to be in a playoff role for your Abbotsford Canucks. Am I am I too bullish on, on what he could accomplish here at Abbotsford? Or should I be pumping the brakes a little bit? Well, I'm just I'm just confused with the details too. Like, is this 
I also heard that like maybe this is like a somewhat of like a conditioning stint for him to like get some pro time, maybe make a little bit of pro money as a little bit of a reward for his accomplishments this season in Sweden. And then after he gets all that done, he's going right back to Europe to play in the World Hockey Championships. You know, like I, I there, like, it's it's a pretty interesting scenario here, because I, I I've, mm-hmm. again I've heard that theory as well. All in all, I think we have to sit here and look at this news again. Jonathan Lekaramaki joining the Abbots for Canucks, and not really focus on this season because again, there's a zero percent chance that this guy plays any games for the Vancouver Canucks. It's it's more looking forward to next season. And, you know, we've talked day after day after day about, I would say the confusion or just like the lack of flair five on five consistently within the top two lines of this team, which is kind of weird to say because we're first in the league, but I cannot wait for this guy and his skill set, And I hope it's ASAP, AKA in September or in October for him to be implemented with Patterson straight up real talk. I, I don't know why, maybe it's a Swedish thing, right? But I don't, I don't know why I feel as if those two players can have an elite-like chemistry be formed in a short amount of time. And again, so I'm looking forward for next year. Like, LeCaramacki and Pedersen, it could be something. And bro, to be honest, 12 months ago, right? 12 months ago. Well, what are we doing, Trevor? Maybe maybe 10 months ago. We're asking ourselves, like, bro, is LeCaramacki a bust? And that's because we're irrational. We're stupid. We're dumbasses. Okay, we're emotional. We're also doing episodes in the summer every day. You know what I'm saying? We're asking ourselves that question. He was coming off a weird season. And look at what he did this year. Such a magical last 10 months for the Vancouver Canucks. And John, Jonathan LeCaramacki, even though he's not involved with the Vancouver Canucks, like the squad that's gearing up for a cup run, he's a piece to not just the puzzle, but to, again, this, this recipe, this pot that Canuck fans are eating off of and just loving because everything is going our way this year. Everything is going the Canucks way. And uh, yeah, speaking of being a dumbass, as I did forget about the whole him playing for Sweden thing. So uh, catching up on it a bit. Apparently the latest report is that the Karamaki will be in Abbotsford uh, and Vancouver for about a week or so with a chance to play in four games for Abbotsford before mm-hmm. going back to Sweden in hopes of making the national team now. I know things mm-hmm. can change. I think the reporting for a long time was that he was just going to stay in Sweden and wasn't going to come to Abbotsford at all. So things can change. You never know. Maybe he tears up in Abbotsford. Maybe uh, maybe the Canucks do want to see what he looks like in the NHL, right? So you never uh, know. I would say anything's possible. But um, yeah, like speaking about the future, Kyle, you know, what have we said about Pedersen so much this season is that he hasn't had any consistency with line mates on his wing. And mm-hmm. man, oh man, with Pedersen and how good of a playmaker he is, coupled with LeCare Mack and, you know, how good of a shooter he is and how he's slippery enough to get into the uh, high danger scoring areas on the ice. Those two seem like they could be a good, good combination. You add mm-hmm. some kind of uh, tougher power for to their line. You know, maybe it's Dakota Joshua. Who knows? Uh, that could be a line that uh, has a lot of different elements. Wow, to it, you just possible. ditched Niels Hoaglander like that, eh? You just ditched Niels Hoaglander like that. Boom, bam. Get out of here, Niels Hoaglander. What are you talking about, bro? Niels Hoaglander, Patterson, and LeCaramaki, that's a trio, okay? And in theory, right? In theory, you never know, right? What if something happens between that line next year? Are we looking at a, a potential line for Team Sweden? I don't know. I don't know. That, that's pretty surreal to have three Swedish players on one line playing for a Canadian team and ripping it up. That would be, again, mainstream over there on the other side of the world. Anyways, let's get to the comments. Uh, LeCaramacki, again, joining the Abbots for Canucks for a couple of days before he tro- goes and tries out for the World Championship team in Sweden, which is kind of interesting because that tournament must matter a lot for Europeans because... If I'm Lakara Mackey, I'm kind of just staying in Abbotsford, you know? And then I'm maybe when Abbotsford gets eliminated and the Canucks are on a deep run, like he just becomes a black ace. You get what I'm saying? I'd rather yeah. be over here than over there playing for Sweden in the World Hockey Championships. Nobody cares about the World Hockey Championships. Anyway, the comments, okay? Canuck Clay, give Lakara Mackey a chance to be around, be around the pros in Abbotsford and Vancouver. Give him a taste so it gives him something to look forward to and work towards. You know, the Vancouver Canucks. They seem to be a very structured organization. Everything is about tomorrow. There's a bigger picture with all of their plays. And again, signing LeCaramacki, giving him a bit of a bonus financially, and, you know, through wisdom and expertise is part of their plan. Give him this taste. Come here for a couple weeks before you go back and 
Know what you're going to be around. Know what the expectations are, right? Know what the regimen in your summer is going to look like. It's a lot of things. And again, just super, super interested to see how his chemistry is going to look like with a guy like Pedersen potentially next year. Look, the, young, the, the league is getting younger, dude. Really young. So it's not a stretch to say that this guy, who again, 10 months ago, we're confused about, is an NHLer in October of 2024. Oh, yeah, honestly, it's really not out of the realm of possibility. Um, you know, I think the biggest can say the biggest concern with him is is size, and that's why Kyle, to your to your point about like why is he going back to Sweden to play in the World Championships? If Abbotsford goes on a long playoff run, I kind of agree with you that the place for him should be in Abbotsford, which is, you know, I, I get excuse my dumbassery off the top, but uh, mm-hmm. that's part of the reason why I kind of figured if he's going to come over here, he's going to stay. Not that the reporting is he's going to come over for a week and then go back to Sweden. It's okay. You're not a dumbass, Trevor. Don't be mean to yourself. You're, <laughs> you're a family man. You're a hardworking man. Like a lot of news is just filtering to your feed every single minute. And again, the Canucks seem to be the most news heavy team in hockey. <laughs> so it's what they're striving for, but uh, Hey, no, no one's perfect. And uh, again, the point I'm making is that LeCarrie Mackey, again, if Abster is going to go on a long playoff run should be in Abbotsford. And who knows, you know, if he performs well down there, maybe the Canucks are an option. You never know. You never know. In the postseason. Wow. The one player who might be an option for the Canucks in the postseason should be Elias Lindholm. But with uh, <laughs> his injury issues, maybe that's not the case. Um, on the other side, though, uh, let's touch maybe on the Lindholm injury. But for sure, we'll touch on Goats of the Week. So I might have to bounce a little early again. Excuse my uh, my computer issues there. Goats of the Week, Elias Lindholm injury and how that affects the Canucks. We're going to talk about that on the other side. Before we do that, though, let's shout out our friends over at Game Time. Uh, you know me, Begsy. I'm a big last-minute deals guy because I'm cheap, okay? I'm cheap. You know, when I'm trying to find killer deals – for tickets at the last minute, you know that the place I go, it's game time, baby. Okay, I can never forget about game time. Not only because these beautiful ad reads that we uh, that we do, but also because I get these emails from Nicole at game time, and she's always teasing me with prices on Canucks tickets and prices for tickets on other events in my area. You know, if uh, you don't want to spend the big bucks on Canucks tickets, uh, you can also find tickets for concerts, comedy, theater, basketball, baseball, football, and more over at. Game time, and you know they're the place to go. Why, Kyle? Because they got the lowest price guarantee. Okay, mm-hmm. the lowest price guarantee. You gotta love it over at Game Time. So make sure that make sure that you download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L O C K E D O N for twenty dollars off. And download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. <laughs> Man, we're going to have a lot of fun tonight in Vancouver, all my real fans. People, people, we back doing this, talking all things Vancouver Canucks, talking all things Abbotsford Canucks, and talking all things World Hockey Championships. Come on, Jonathan LeCaramacki. Come on, bro. Just stay here on this side. Maybe you never know, man. You never know. Maybe the plans change for him, okay? He's, again, here for a couple of days. Uh, collecting a check, collecting some wisdom, uh, you know, receiving his bonus, uh, plans on going across seas to play for Sweden at the tournament that doesn't matter again. Maybe that doesn't happen because he realizes that again. That tournament doesn't matter. And this time over here on the West Coast, the best coast in 2024, springtime, summertime is something you may want to stick around for, for real. Anyways, we got a lot to talk about, man. This team, the real team, the real Vancouver Canucks, dealing with a, uh, Again, a lot of moving parts. And and it makes me think about this question from Mr. Whale, okay? Uh, Why are the Canucks being so weird about the Lindholm issue? Why were the Vancouver Canucks being so weird about the Thatcher Demko issue? AKA, why are they letting players play through injury at this time of the season? I got to ask you that question, Trevor, because look look at that cushion. Now, maybe the easy answer is, you know, in recent history, quote unquote, the Canucks, you know, were kind of desperate to find their game and find some momentum. And, you know, Lindholm being a baller, Demko being a baller. These guys are competitive guys. They're going to play through injury, blah, blah, blah. Uh, let's just stick them in and get some dubs. I can see that being a reason. But at the same time, I am more than confused. Uh, why do you think they're letting players play through injury? 
I mean, that's a great question. I, I would love more information on what the Lindholm injury actually is. I think we all, you know, assume it's upper body, even though no one's saying anything. Uh, Friedman's got his uh, his little birds out there in typical varies Game of Thrones fashion. Um, um, but Jeff Patterson, PR was... Sorry, Jeff Patterson was saying that uh, when Lindholm talked to the media yesterday or two days ago, mm -hmm. his hands were in his pocket. So mm -hmm. do the math. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So again, we assume it's upper body and, and hand makes sense because... You know, his skating looks fine, but he's not really shooting the puck as much. Although, you know, he had a couple more shots to go against the Flames on Saturday. Um, I think it just depends how banged up he is, right? Like, like, like you said, Kyle. To your point, it's there's not much pressure for the Canucks right now because they're first overall in the uh, in the standings, um, first overall uh, in the Western Conference as well. You know, they got time to rest these guys, and that's why they said they should rest Demko. The, the difference between Demko and Lindholm to me is that you know Demko has proven that he's one of the best goalies in the league this season, whereas Lindholm is still trying to find his place in this team. So mm. I guess there's the risk that, you know, if Lindholm's not that banged up and he can play through it, you know, he's still trying to find his footing in Vancouver 20 games later. If you rest him and he doesn't come back to the playoffs, it's like you're still wondering where this guy fits in uh, when the games start to really matter. So, okay, okay. Um, yeah, I, I, I do think there's a bit of give and take there. It's not just like, oh, this guy's banged up. Don't play him. It's, you know, what is the injury and can he play through it? Right. So, yeah, I, I think a lot, yeah. a lot depends on man. There's a lot up in the air. Um, um, yeah, I will say with with Little in particular, uh, he wasn't one of my uh, best five Canucks last week. Maybe big surprise there, but uh, uh, wait, wait. got anything got anything to say on Lindholm before I get to go to the week here? I do because look at this comment from uh, Lefty again. One left the Lefty part of the Discord. You know, just just a smart dude, right? A lot of intelligent mm -hmm. people in the link in the bio. Okay. Anyways, uh, he says that he hopes Lindholm doesn't play tonight, and you know goes on his way to help cure whatever is ailing him. And then he also adds this, okay? We can easily win without him, okay? Whether he is in the lineup at this at this point, and I totally agree. I totally agree. Yeah, minus the face-offs, you don't think Pew Suter can do the exact same things as Elias Lindholm right now? He's centering a line with Lafferty and whomever. I, again, I'm, just, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, bro, <laughs> again, I'm just, I'm, I, I'm just curious. I've been wrong so many times about the Vancouver Canucks over the last 10 to 12 months, okay? They're doing everything right. They're pushing all the right buttons. I'm just interested to see why they're okay with Thatcher Demko not feeling good at the morning skate, but pushing him out, out against the Jets. And now Lindholm, this guy they traded 19 assets for, dealing with an injury. You're 10 points up on the Oilers. You're playing some pretty crappy teams, to be real. You're playing AHL teams. You played the Montreal Canadiens and the Calgary Flames back-to-back. -back. And you're like, you know what? We still need you in the lineup. I'm, I'm just, why? Hey, you know what? You make some good points, my co-host. When are you going? When are you going? When are you going to a game? When are you going to a game next? When, when are you a reporter next? Are you done for the year or what? I don't know. So we do the schedule by month, and uh, no update on April right now. So it's a good question. I'll when be ready post game, there, but next time I'm at the rink, I don't know. When you get in there, you got to ask the question. Anyways, go to the week coming up. Trevor Bags been doing this all year, uh, closer and closer to unveiling. Uh, the goat of the year for the Vancouver Canucks, and you know what? If I get, if I get access to the Vancouver Canucks or Locked On does, the winner of the goat of the year will get some Fijian Hindu cooked goat curry from my father. Okay. Damn. Okay. There we go. Do it. Go to the week here on Locked On Canucks. Where's the, where's the button? All right, go to the week for your Vancouver Canucks last week. Again, they played three games. They won them all against inferior competition, but at least the Canucks looked good when they were winning hockey games, beating the Buffalo Sabres, the Montreal Canadiens, and the Calgary Flames. Now, we talk about that GOAT of the year. Right now, JT Miller has a big lead uh, in the yearly power rankings, uh, but he does not make the GOAT of the week this week for your top five best Canucks of the week. So. Uh, I'm going to start at number five this week and then work my way up. Number five, I have Nikita Zadorov, the big man himself. I uh, gets a couple of goals against the Montreal Canadiens, mm -hmm. uh, a couple of thunderous hits against the Flames. But overall, I just thought he was playing good, strong, defensive hockey for your Vancouver Canucks. Not too many mistakes. Uh, and one of the biggest mistakes I did see last week, uh, he got bailed out by the Canadiens going offside. So um, that's Zadorov at number five. Number four, I have Nils Hoaglander, Okay. With uh, one of the goals of the year uh, against the Calgary Flames, certainly one of the best goals of his young career. 
Kyle, can you? I was kind of curious about this during the game on on uh, Saturday. Can you think of a player who scored two completely different goals in the game? Because I saw that first hook lander goal, the tap and after a nice tic tac from Garland and Pedersen. That must have been one of the easiest goals he ever scored. Just kind of taps it in, into an empty net and then does what he does on Markstrom. Like, can you remember a scenario where a Canuck player or any player has scored two such different goals in the game? It's a good question. It's too early to ask me. I've only had one cup of coffee and I got like 18 projects to deal with today. So I'm not going to answer <laughs> that. Uh, but what, what I will do is resurface this and say that that second goal that Hoaglander scored was probably one of the nicest goals of the year for the Vancouver Canucks. I, mean, I know it was on a breakaway and there wasn't like two or three dangles around players in order for him to get that space. It was a clear cut break, breakaway, but there was just so much confidence there. There was, it, it was a sexy goal. It was elite. And I'm curious to see if that type of goal, again, this might be the West Coast bias and a lot of recency bias, but I'm curious to see if that type of goal ignites Hoaglander to do more. Because it wasn't a tap-in. It wasn't, it wasn't around the net. You know, It wasn't a rebound. It was, I'm scoring on any goaltender in the league with this move. And this is not me being lucky. This is me tapping into this skill set that got me drafted in the first two rounds of the NHL draft. And, you know, that's that's the thing. What happens when we finally get to see a Hoaglander who's not just focused on the structure, the little things, going hard to the net, playing gritty, which we all love. We all love. But what if those things are just cemented in him and they're so instinctual that that then allows him to spread his wings completely? And, you know, we saw some crazy comments yesterday. You know, somebody's, somebody said, this guy is Martin St. Louis. Oh, this guy's going to put up 80 to 90 points. All I'm saying is go back, go back in time and look at this guy's film. Dude, we haven't seen one eighth. Oh no, like seven eighths of the amount of skill that this guy has. For real. Yeah. Yeah. He's uh he's looking better and better. And who knows? He maybe he'll even uh match Alex Burroughs' total of uh rec franchise record of 28 goals scored in one season. The most goals ever scored by Canuck who didn't have a single power play goal in one season. Hoglander doing the most for Vancouver Canucks, but again, only the fourth best player last week. In my opinion, uh, I'll rip through the last three quickly before we get to break. Number three, I have Connor Garland. Again, such a play driver, looking so sharp in that top line. I think he's, you know, brought Petters into another level, if you will. Uh, good week for Garland there. Number two, I have Casey DeSmith, who, you know, doing the most, man. Again, the defense in front of him is not allowing much, but Casey DeSmith also holding down the fort. And there's a different challenge when you're only facing 20 shots a night, right? You got to be sharp in, in a different way. And I thought Casey Smith did that for the Vancouver Canucks last week. Uh, a lot of the, you know, of the five goals he scored, you know, a late one to Montreal. Uh, most of them were kind of a third period later in the game. If Casey Smith would, could, would hold up in the third period, he might have had a shutout or two last week. But overall, strong performance from him. And at number one, I have Elias Pettersson. Five points in three games last week, including that three-point game against the Sabres. And, Damn. you know, Rick Tockett was very complimentary of Pettersson after the game on Saturday saying, no, not, not only is the offensive game there, but he really thinks this 200 foot game uh, is coming along of late. And, you know, use some of the wording that it's business like, and, and Petey knows he's got to ramp it up and he's doing so. So I, I agree with talking. I think Petey's been ramping it up, and I do think he was the best Canucks skater that was on the ice last week. And on that note, it's safe to say that uh, my expectations are going through the roof. My expectations of wanting more from Patterson are still there, even though he had a pretty successful week and uh, it lands on this game day against the LA Kings. Bring it, bring it, you know, Patterson, it would be fitting if he, after signing an $11.6 million contract, is that the number? Is that the number? 11 yeah. points after signing that one, it would be fitting if he ultimately did the most today on a game in which the Canucks are able to book their spot into the NHL playoffs. Now it's already said and done like 98 points are getting in, but it would just be fitting again. If we get the X by our name in the standings and Pedersen was a big part of it. It would make a lot of sense. Now, uh, Kyle, I know you got the people covered for a little Canucks Kings talk, a little playoff talk, reading the comments on the other side, who knows what you're doing. Uh, apologize for my issues. And I got to leave early. Uh, okay. But I love each and every one of you here on Locked On Canucks. Let's do the last ad read for the show. It's our friends over at Sleeper before we wrap up the show here on Locked On Canucks. All right, Canucks fans, like Kyle alluded to, the Canucks can clinch the first playoff spot in the NHL tonight against the LA Kings. Let's go, baby. You know, if you want to clinch some wins yourself, 
make sure you try uh, some playing some Daily Fantasy Hockey on Sleeper, the official Daily Fantasy app of the Locked On NHL Network. Sleeper is my number one choice for Daily Fantasy Sports and especially Daily Fantasy Hockey. Because with Sleeper, you could win 100 times your cash in Daily Fantasy Hockey contests. All you have to do is pick whether studs like Casey DeSmith, Nikita Zadorov, or Big Sexy Tyler Myers will record more or less than their sleeper projections for things like goals, assists, saves, plus, minus, and more in a given game. To win a 100 times bet on sleeper, you need to correctly predict the outcome of eight player stats. You heard me, Canucks fans. You can win 100 times your money playing daily fantasy hockey with sleeper, so start paying attention and nail your picks so you can start winning big. Use promo code Logshot NHL and you'll get up to $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's code Locked On NHL. See sleepers, terms of use for details and locational availability. Okay, people, we back here on Locked On Canucks, running it solo dolo to end the show. My name is Kyle Bowen. Hit the like button, subscribe to the program if you haven't done so already. It really does help us out a lot. And uh, we get closer and closer to the goal, man, okay? Taking our girlfriends to uh, Cactus Club every now and then uh, with your support. And also just getting closer and closer to the live show, man. Uh, the live shows matter, man. Can we possibly throw the coolest and greatest playoff parties this spring and summer? I think so. Mainly because uh, we're supported by the Don't Doze Art Lab. If you don't know, you will know soon. Uh, these guys really do care. Really do take care of the West Coast bias and their neighbors over here on this side. Anyway, speaking of our neighbors, uh, let's do it. Let's go to, through some comments before we get out of here. Again, the Canucks are expected to what? Clinch a playoff spot tonight. Let's get the win. Uh, let's do something beautiful. And let's do so against the LA Kings, okay? It, it's fitting. I think in October we made a video after the Canucks got off to a hot start about uh, the Canucks comparing or, you know, how other teams in the Pacific Division compare to the Vancouver Canucks. And can the Canucks, you know, be one of the juggernaut, juggernauts and compete against the, the Kings and the, the Golden Knights? Well, fast forward to the now, and uh, <laughs> we're way up. So, again, it would be fitting if the Canucks beat the LA Kings tonight, get to 100 points, and clinch a playoff spot. Okay, uh, let's get to the comments. Uh, Elston Gunn, okay, is Lindholm legitimately hurt, or are we speculating because he's missed a few practices? legitimately hurt maybe i think so rick tockett has alluded to him dealing with something elliot friedman reporting that the canucks and lindholm are going to you know do a double check on this injury right go to the doctor see what's wrong so he is hurt right and as andrew alludes to in a comment maybe it's not a serious injury maybe it isn't right it probably isn't that's why he's still playing against the montreal canadians and the calgary flames but i'll say it again i'm confused I'm confused, man. If we were fighting for a playoff spot, I, I would understand it. You know, you know what that being said, though, I will say maybe this organization is understanding that home ice is really, really important, you know? Like, yeah, they got a playoff spot locked up, but they don't have home ice locked up yet, right? Colorado keeps winning. Uh, the Oilers, prior to the two-game losing streak and losing five of nine, uh, were winning games. Uh, maybe that is why, again, a guy like Lindholm, uh, competitive dude uh, wanted to stay in the lineup, okay? Uh, look at G. Ellis, okay? I kind of want to see the Canucks versus Vegas in round one. I think we'd smash Vegas in five games. I think we'd beat Vegas in six or seven. And I'm down. I'm down. Been saying this game after game after game. Bring on the best of the best. Bring on the best of the West. Uh, let's go through Vegas and Edmonton and Colorado. Before we get to the Stanley Cup Finals. Why? Because this story is magical. This story doesn't make sense. And doing all of that. Right? Going in that order would be. Unreal. And add to. Again. The legacy. In which. We're kind of seeing. Being put out. This season. Oh, what a season. Speaking of what a season. A Hoagland is way better. Than I thought he'd be. And G. Ellis. Okay. Hoglander. Highly skilled. Reminds me of Yannick Hansen with more finish. I think we're seeing that version of him right now. Uh, you can even 
look at a player like Victor Arvidsson when he was putting up like 30 plus goals, right? Uh, that could be a Niels Hoglander type. I think he could be even more if he really taps into his complete arsenal, right? The guy's highly skilled, yet he's had to take this long approach to being an everyday top six NHL. I was also looking at uh, his hockey DB, bro. This guy, I don't know if this guy's ever scored 20 goals in his pro life, even dating back to Sweden, right? What a player, yo. What a player. And if you even bring it back to that draft in general, yo, thank, thank God we got him. Thank the hockey gods that we got him after we picked up Pot Colson because um, <laughs> that pick has been... That pick was off. Okay, Pot Colson won assist through, what, a handful of games. I think he's been good. I think he's been effective in a different way, but not being able to put up points consistently is... Uh, it's worrisome based on where they picked him. Now, that being said, again, I've been impressed. Yo, like, I, I don't know if a lot of us have given, including myself, right? I've given enough credit for Pot Colson. And if you've watched him recently, uh, this guy's been trying his hardest and doing so while putting his body on the line. And you got to keep in mind that this guy suffered a pretty gruesome injury early on in the season, right? Yet he's gone to the NHL. I think after like game five or game six, he was like, F this. I, I want to stay here. I want to collect these NHL checks. I want to be with the big dogs. And I'm going to stand out. And he's quickly transformed into one of the best hitters with the Vancouver Canucks. That's a way for him to stay in the lineup, okay? He's playing more physical than PDG and Neil Zaman and Sam Lafferty. I think Rick Tockett really appreciates that. Hey, maybe... That physicality and him body checking instills a level of confidence in him that takes him over the top, that has him playing more offensive, that has him playing like he's fluid and intuitive and a top 10 pick. Now, we've been there. I know it's been a while, but you can see it. You can feel it. Game one of the playoffs, game two of the playoffs. If Pot Colson is still in the lineup and playing with that type of killer mentality, that Raffy Torres energy, bro, he can get the crowd going. And that's the type of energy that a guy like that can feed off of. Look at John, man. John telling me that I sound like a seal. Hey, man. Every single Hindu Fijian podcaster that talks about the Canucks sounds like a seal. It is what it is. One love to all the listeners. Aaron Gray, okay, talking about Dakota Joshua being back at practice. I cannot be happier. Um, I, I'm hearing a lot of talk about uh, where Joshua could be in the lineup when he returns. And, um, yeah, still not really... Still not really understanding everyone's logic about moving Joshua and Garland all around the lineup when Joshua's healthy. Because the easiest thing to do is... Put that third line together while you have this runway of games before the playoffs and try to get Lindholm going offensively with either Miller or Patterson. And then move Pia Suter to the fourth line to center that. I think that gives the Canucks still a deep lineup to roll four lines. And also it gives them the ability to give Lindholm some momentum. I could blame Lindholm all I want, right? He's playing through injury, doing his thing, working his hardest, uh, but the offense, the contribution hasn't been there. That being said, you know, two straight games with points. Maybe it gets going now. Uh, but all at the same time, uh, this guy took a shift with Pot Colson and Niels Am Amon in the third period of that game against Calgary. Uh, this guy's playing through injury to play with Niels Amon and Pot Colson. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, at some point you can't, you can't look at this guy as an offensive com contributor if he's playing with those guys. And there's like a 15% chance that he's a bottom six center going into the playoffs because that's how the Canucks want to implement the centers on their lineup. Which is something that makes sense, but I feel as if the Canucks could use a bit of flair in their top six, and they traded a lot of assets for a guy that was supposed to be 
the missing piece to, again, the Canucks being fluid and sexy and just the uh, offensive dynamo. Oh, look at these lines from Mike L. Okay, how about Hoaglander, Miller, and Besser, Joshua, Pedersen, and Garland, Mikhaev, Lindholm, and Potkolzin, and Suter, Bluger, and Lafferty. That's a lot of moving and grooving. Uh, taking Hoaglander away from Pedersen, taking Garland and Josh away from Bluger. But I will say this, reading all those names from top to bottom, has me thinking, man, the Canucks, they're pretty deep. They're pretty deep. Anyways, my name is Kyle Bowen. I'll get out of here. I got a lot of work to do at the Don't Doze Art Lab. I'm behind on so many projects, man. And the only thing that's stopping me from getting a lot of stuff done is the Vancouver Canucks. Luckily, here at the Don't Doze Art Lab, uh, they do kind of put uh, the Vancouver Canucks first. In fact, you know, the only reason I got a position at this studio all that time ago was because I'm a Canucks fan. And if you think I'm lying, I'm not. And that whole story, that true story, will be told to the people either in the Discord or at one of our live shows, okay? Hey, speaking of the Discord, we're going to be doing some more giveaways. We just gave away one ticket to Zach Omama, right? I don't even know who this person is. He or she is going to the Canucks game tonight at 6 p.m. Reminder, the game's at 6 and she's doing that because she's part of the Discord. We're going to be doing more giveaways down there. So join the link in the bio below. A lot of news about everything that Trevor and I are going to be doing going into the summer and going into the playoffs. Man, oh, man, we just appreciate your support. And uh, we're on a mission to make some of the best hockey material uh, for, quite honestly, the best fans in the world. Hey, one left to JS. He, he did send us a super chat earlier, too. And JS is also going to the Canucks game today. Is it because it's his birthday, too? Maybe, I think Callum is going to the Canucks game as well. A lot of LOC energy in the building. When you're there, put it in the air, okay? We're going to win a cup in June this season. Put it in the air. Do it for all of us. Anyways, again, my name is Kyle Bowen. One love to Locked On in the podcast network for instilling that your Canucks everyday energy. K-Y-L-E-B-H-A-W-A-N is the name. And yeah, I love you, yo. If you're a Canuck fan, I love you. I really do. Uh, let's go clinch a playoff spot today, and maybe, maybe I'll see you after the game. You're Locked On Canucks, your daily podcast on the Vancouver Canucks.